What's your recommendation for an outdoor security camera, and am I creepy for wanting one? Uh, I have three or four, so I'm going to say, no, you're not creepy. And I'm also going to say, um, I think it would depend on what you want it for. If you just want it because you're really curious about what happens in your neighborhood during the day, that's a different thing than um, I am gone a lot and I want my house to be safe. Or, um, you know, like there's been, a, there's been an uptick in the number of cars broken into or things like that. And I want to find out more about, uh, what's happening there. And I want to make sure, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's creepy as long as it's not just, I'm really curious what my neighbors do when I'm not home. <laughs> I think otherwise you're fine. And, um, my recommendation for an outdoor security camera is currently up in the air. Uh, the ones I have are, um, they're from Samsung, and it's this whole system where you have to run physical wire out to everything, and then it all plugs into this DVR, and uh, the app for the DVR, like the, the application to manage the DVR doesn't work very well on a Mac, and I'm an Apple user, so um, that's kind of a pain in the neck. Um, but I have heard good things about the Arlo cameras, for uh, outdoor use and if what you want is um, you know like a, a doorbell camera basically like I could have opened up an app if I had a ring doorbell or something like it um, I could have just picked up my phone and seen who was at the door and gone hey you know I can't answer the door right now come back later or whatever it was and um, you know and it can also show you uh, like there's a package on the step or you know whatever so that may be a thing uh, that you want to consider is like what what do you actually want it for like if you have um, you know a particular part of your house that that faces away from the street and but it's there's it's very easy to access and you want to make sure that there's not something weird going on there or whatever um, that's a thing that that you may want a slightly different camera for and what you have to look at with those is um, how you get access to what they record if they're recording things and then um, how you can access that information because you have to sort of, with a lot of problems that I'm trying to solve, like particularly with home automation and all the stuff I can run with my phone, um, you may want to consider having a, uh, like working backwards. What do you want to do? I want to, you know, I travel a lot and I want to make sure my house is secure when I'm not home. Okay, then you need to make sure that you have cameras you can access from an app that's compatible with your phone you may want to try the app and or look at video reviews of it to see the app in action so you can tell if it's easy to use or if it's super complicated. Um, I have actually made purchasing decisions based on um, I tried the app for that version of this thing and it sucks so I'm gonna use this other one because I can actually figure it out because uh, that's important like it's especially if it's something like a camera where you're gonna want to use it all the time or when you're using it like you're being prompted in some way. Um, Something is happening at my house. The house alarm is going off. Uh, somebody, you know, my a person who lives at my house called me and said there's some weird noises outside and I want to know what's happening. Um, you know, you want to make sure it works right then, that minute, like particularly with cameras. You want to make sure that you are able to get to them easily. So if you're doing that, um, you sort of have to work backwards, like I said, and make make decisions based on what you want to do. So is the, you know, is it a mobile app? Uh, what do you want to use, um, uh, what do you want to use it for, you know, like, because a doorbell camera is very different from having just outdoor security cameras, um, how do you access that information, what happens to that information, uh, drop cam was a thing that a lot of people really liked, for example, and then, uh, Google bought drop cam, and anybody who had the older cameras, um, because they were Google, Google could afford to send new ones out to everybody, but in some cases, like, the company goes out of business or, um, you know, something happens and maybe they upgrade and you don't want to and now yours don't work anymore. So literally that original series of drop cameras is useless because they only recorded to the cloud and the cloud service has gone away. So um, you want to look at things like that as well. Like, one of the advantages to the outdoor cameras that we bought is that it records locally to the DVR. So, like, worst case... Even if I couldn't access it remotely, I can access it from my house. If I'm in my house on my own network, I can look at all the video and see the parts that are recorded and all of that because it's just a local network connection to the actual box where that recording actually lives. So um, 
with security cameras, that's a thing to, to think about. And another thing that I thought was super handy um, when we set these up is that you can set blackouts. So, for example, if you're pointing out into the street and one thing that you're getting is, say, your neighbor's windows, uh, you can put a little blackout square on that window so even if it's recording, you're not actually getting, like, whoever's walking through the kitchen of the house across the street or, you know, who's sitting in the living room across the street or whatever. Like, you can black those out and make sure that you're not getting information that you aren't meaning to actually record. Like, if you want to know what's happening in your driveway, not what's happening in their kitchen, then uh, that little black square will help um, do that. And that's that's been pretty another handy feature of um, the system that we have. There are a number of them out there. Um, part of it also depends on your level of patience with technology <laughs> because some of them come with great instructions and they're really easy to set up and some of them don't. And uh, it sometimes can be hard to break down which piece of the process is failing so that you can figure out where to start fixing things. Um, that can be really complicated too and um, I do not enjoy it, but um, it's worth it to me because when things are working, I have a lot of convenience afforded to me as a result. So that would be um, another thing to consider there.